Hey everyone, my name is Chloe and welcome to my October anticipated releases. So this is one of the biggest videos that I do every month and I, if you have not seen any of them, I am telling you about all these books, not with the intention of reading them all, but just because I fall down deep rabbit holes of looking at what's coming out and getting excited about them and I want to share that news with you guys. I don't know how many of these I'll read, if any of these, um, they're all on my radar, but uh, let's just get into it. So it is going to be a big month and October is like prime time for releasing Christmas books. So I promise not all of these are Christmas books by any means, but there are a handful of them. So let's just get ready. Uh, I, there's like a hundred and something books. And so let's chat about them and get your Goodreads open, get a glass of water, some coffee, whatever you want, and let's chat. So the first day is October 1st. So we have The Night We Lost Him by Laura Dave. Now, I think a lot of people have probably heard about this. Laura Dave is an author that I've read almost everything from. And she wrote, she started, I think, writing like women's fiction kind of contemporary books and then now has moved more into the thriller genre. And this is about a strange sibling's that come back together um, because they discover their father has been keeping a secret for over like 50 years and um, part of it might be fatal. I don't really know. I don't want to know a whole lot about it. Like I said, I'm going to read it because I have enjoyed most of Laura Dave's, Laura Dave's stuff anyway. So um, I'm going to try it. Then we have One Big Happy Family by Susan Mallory. Again, a Christmas book by Susan Mallory is not something that I'm probably going to pass up ever, but this is about a woman who is really excited for, she's like a middle-aged woman. She's really excited for Christmas alone with her new lover. Um, her kids all have like other things going on. And then her kids are like, actually, we want to come to like the family cabin to kind of remember our dad. And I think things, of course, go chaotic um, as you're bringing your adult kids with your new boyfriend and how it all works out. It's going to be fun. It's going to be cute. I have no doubt about it. Then we have uh, The Boyfriend by Frida McFadden. So this is a Frida McFadden popcorn thriller. These are not going to be literary masterpieces by any means, but it's going to be a good quick time. And this one, it says she's looking for the perfect man. He's looking for the perfect victim. So we'll see what happens. Then we have Some Like It Cold by Ellie. Um, Ellie McNoll, maybe? This is about a girl that comes home for Christmas and bumps into her teen adversary who is now like a uh, filmmaker. And so it says it's a big-hearted small-town romance for fans of Alice Oseman, Talia Hibbert, and Gilmore Girls. And I know there's some autism uh, rep in this, and so I think it's going to be cute. We'll see. Then we have Onyx and Beyond. Um, I didn't write down who the author is on this, so I will have a picture up so you can see. But this is a middle grade historical fiction about a young black boy who is living with his mom, and his mom is starting to show signs of early onset dementia. And so he's trying to stay out, like he's trying to cover it all up, um, stay out, uh, like get child welfare out of it. And um, it's also in the time of the Civil Rights Movement. So discussion on where it's safe for him to be as a young black boy and how he's trying to to juggle it all. Then we have Remember Me Tomorrow by Farrah Heron. Um, this is a YA about a girl who's trying to find the boy who disappeared from like the dorms months ago. And she gets messages, I think, from like the past, from him in the past maybe. And they're like living together but in different timelines. And uh, they're both working together to try to like prevent his disappearance even though it's already happened. I don't know. Sounds uh, like something that will be interesting and potentially unique. But we'll see. Then we have Nothing Like the Movies by Lynn Painter. So this is the sequel to Better Than the Movies, which I have not read yet, um, but I really want to. It's like really high on my radar. So now that the sequel's coming out, maybe I'll just binge the duology. Then we have The Mistletoe Mystery by Nita Prose, another sequel. This is a, like two and a half in the Maid series, uh, a series that I have not started, but now I'm kind of thinking I might just wait for it to conclude so I can binge it. Let me get, let me know what you guys think. But I think our Christmas one's going to be sweet. We have Snowed In by Catherine Walsh. So this is uh, Fitzpac Fitzpatrick Christmas number two. But I think they can be read as standalones. Um, so this is about a woman who doesn't want to go home for Christmas because she left the town's golden boy at the altar like many years ago. And so she's kind of the town pariah. And he, the guy is annoyed that he always gets like sad eyes at Christmas because he's single. Even though he's not upset about actually being single. He's just annoyed that like he gets, he gets the like pity. And so they decide to fake date at Christmas, which is great. Um, 
Uh, it's for fans of H Emily Henry, Sophie Kinsella, and Abby Jimenez, all of which are authors that I've enjoyed, so I think it's going to be cute. Then we have The Imperfect Parent, A Non-Judgmental Guide to Raising Children in the Modern World by Kate Hamilton. So I don't know much more besides that. Um, just I love parenting nonfiction and we're all imperfect parents and just reminder, I'm hoping it's going to be a good reminder to like give yourself grace and just do the best you can and that's my goal. Then we have Marigold Mind Laundry by, um, I'm, not, I'm just going to put a picture up so I don't butcher the name. But this is a book that has been released in Korea, and now it's coming to the United States. And it is a really interesting fantasy concept about this woman who dreams up a laundromat. And you can come to the laundromat and basically get rid of painful memories. And she takes your memories and basically makes them like stains on shirts. And then she washes the shirts and gets the stains away. And I think we get the stories of like five different people that come into the laundromat. And uh, the life lessons she learns from hearing their stories. I'm not sure, but sounds like a fantasy that I could get behind. Maybe. Fingers crossed. Then we have Every Moment Since by Mary Beth Mayhew Wallen. Uh, this is about a boy who goes missing, the case goes cold, and then like his jacket or something is found and it reopens the case. And the reason I think this one sounds interesting is because we get four perspectives. His brother, his mother, um, and then a girl his age that has like a secret connection to him as well as the potential suspect. And so... I think it's going to be interesting seeing how, like, the cold case and the reopening has impacted all these people in his life. So, we'll see. Then we have Wished by Sarah Reddy. So, this is number four in her Ghosted series. I think, again, that they're all standalones. If I'm wrong, please let me know. But this is about a um, girl named Anna who wishes she's married to the owner. Of, like, she's a cleaning lady. And she um, wants wishes she's married to, like, the owner of the chateau or whatever that she's cleaning. And then she wakes up and she is. And so, what's life like? And is it really as great as she thought it would be? I love that kind of alternate reality. So there we go. Then we have Impractical Magic. This is, it says, the perfect autumn read where Gilmer Girls meets Charmed in a cozy second chance romance with a sprinkle of magic. What else could you want? This is about a girl who goes home to try to work with her estranged sisters to save their mom's, or to save their mom's inn from like a curse that's been put on it. Um, it's a romance with her old flame. I don't know. Something you're going to have to take a great, with a grain of salt, but definitely fall vibes. Then we have The Merry Matchmaker by Sheila Roberts. So Sheila Roberts is another kind of romance women, women's fiction author that writes a lot of great Christmas books. And this is inspired by Jane Austen's Emma. Um, it tells the story of a woman who can't stop, let's see what it says, can't stop um, trying to help everyone around her find their happily ever after, even when help her help leads to disaster. Now the real reason I put this on is because it's blurbed by Rachel Linden, who wrote The Magic of Lemon Drop Pie, which was my favorite book of 2023. So I I am going to read it. Then we have The Girls of Skylark Lane by Robin Benway. So this is her debut middle grade. And this says for fans of The Babysitter's Club and The Sandlot. So like if The Babysitter's Club and The Sandlot met, this is uh, when twin sisters join a ragtag neighborhood girls softball team at a time when growing up could mean growing apart. I am going to love this. I just know it. I actually put that one on hold at our library. So hopefully I'll get it as soon as it comes in. Then we have Stronger at the Seams by Shannon Stalker. This is a about a YA, a YA about a girl who has like severe health issues, but nobody, like doctors and stuff, are not listening to her. They're saying she's just having like GI issues, and um, she starts to investigate her deceased mother's journals, and she kind of thinks she finds a reason for everything going on that she's facing. I don't know if it's like magical at all, or if it's just um, she's got similar things to what her mom had. I'm not sure, but I just love that conversation around advocating for yourself, and especially in a YA setting, I think it could be a really important book. Then we have No One Will Know by Rose Carlisle. So this is about a woman who is desperate for a job. So she agrees to nanny for this couple who's uber uber wealthy. Well, now the couple has kind of sinister intentions with this nanny. And it says it's deliciously twisty and suspenseful and shows the terrible consequences of shocking greed, staggering lies, and fatal mistakes. Yikes. And then on a totally different front, we have A Healing Touch by Suzanne Woods Fisher. This is an Amish story about a female doctor who still does house calls, cares about like not just the physical, but also the emotional needs of her patients. And um, I know her assistant is a part of this, and it's just all, all her stories. And I love the idea of that. So there's that. Then we have Class Act. 
Class Act by Kelsey Rodkey. This is about a new girl in town, um, new girl to the high school, and she butts heads with the class president. And so, so much so that they like stage a re-election. And I think it's like the enemies to lovers romance. Sounds cute. I like the idea of like a girl just standing up for what she believes in. Then we have Society of Lies by Lauren Ling Brown. This says, when a, when a young woman is found dead on her college campus, her sister doesn't believe it was an accident, and her search for answers leads, to, leads her closer to home than she ever would have imagined in this thrilling debut from an exciting new talent. So, I, I, I really like the idea of dark academia. I haven't loved anything that I've read with that trope, but I'm going to try this one and see. Then we have Three Things About Emmy Crawford by Allison L. Blitz. Um, Bits, maybe? This is about Crohn's disease, the paparazzi, and heartbreak can't derail Emmy Crawford, the type type A daughter of a senator, from relentlessly pursuing her dreams in this coming, coming of age novel, perfect for fans of Lynn Painter and Rachel Lynn Solomon. So, sign me up. Then we have The Ballerina of Auschwitz by Dr. Edith Eva Eager. That's a lot of E's in that name. Um, this is the YA version of her memoir called The Choice. And she was a ballerina in Auschwitz. And so I think uh, it, it would be really interesting to kind of read both the adult version and potentially the more digestible YA version. We'll see. Then we have The Night of the Crash by Jessica Irina Smith. This is about a podcaster who wakes up um, in a hospital with no memory of how she got there. She's in the like Colorado town where her estranged family is from, and she's not even sure why she's in that town. And she knows that her mom was killed and her brother is the main suspect. So she's trying to figure it all out as she comes to from whatever happened to her. Then we have October 2nd, Christmas Actually by Lisa Darcy. So this is one that it's kind of just the name and the cover that got me. But this is a festive drama about family and forgiveness and a snapshot of modern family life addressing subjects from social media to motherhood and everything in between. So sounds really applicable. Then we have October 3rd, Loving Mothers by Miranda Smith. So this says, Our whole neighborhood is desperately searching for sixteen year old, uh, for sixteen year old, my own daughter's best friend. But I know my daughter is lying about the night Shelby disappeared. And uh, a mother will do anything to protect her child. So that's another trope that I really love to read about is thrillers where moms are protecting their kids, uh, potentially despite better judgment. And so there's that. Then we have The Day He Disappeared by Katherine Miller. This is about a woman um, trying to get home to her dying brother. And a guy helps her. She's like stuck on a train, something. The guy helps her. And she follows for him. And they have a romance. But then he goes missing. And she's t trying desper desperately to find him. But did he go, like, he, I guess he had to leave maybe to protect her? Did he go willingly? Did he not? What is going on? Can she find him before it's too late? It says for fans of Jody Pico, um, Liam Moriarty, and Diane Chamberlain, which are three of my favorites. So I would definitely be interested just based on that. Then we have October 4th, uh, Take Me Home for Christmas by Miranda Liaison, maybe. I've read a handful of her books, and I'm hit and miss with them. Basically, they're, they're always pretty good, but the cover got me. This is about fake dating between two pediatricians, and I love, like, I love reading things in the medical field, and I don't know why. Call me crazy, but I do. Then we have All the Jingle Ladies by Beth Garrett. So probably not the only book with this title, but this is a funny Christmas romance about a girl whose parents have a really popular like Christmas hit from long ago. And as a kid, she was the elf in the music video. And so now she's like trying to not let that get out. She is embarrassed and stuff. And uh, the song has a resurgence and she's trying to like just hide her identity from her crush. Then we have October 8th, The Holiday Honeymoon Switch by Julia McKay. Um, this is about when doppelganger best friends trade one's, one's cabin Christmas vacation for the other's Hawaiian would have been honeymoon. Both find love that they weren't expecting. So the holiday the holiday swap, um, this trope is a fun one that I think I'll probably have multiple on this list, but it's a fun one and sounds cute. Then we have Christmas in Aspen by Anita Hughes. So this is about a woman who's burnt out like on her regular life. She goes to um, a cabin or something, like her mom's cabin, her deceased mom's cabin for the holidays. And she finds a letter, a love letter to her mom with a return address um, that is to Santa's little red mailbox in Aspen. And so I don't think her mom's cabin is in Colorado. So she flies to Aspen and she's supposed to meet this guy on New Year's Eve. That's what the letter says. So she goes and... I think she finds her own romance as well as learns more about her mom. I love those ideas. 
Then we have The Last One at the Wedding by Jason Rekulak. How do you say his name? You guys tell me. Um, this is about a father that gets his, gets a call from his estranged daughter. And he, she's inviting him to her wedding. And so he goes. And it's kind of... Uh, a sinister situation. He, she's marrying the son of a big tech mogul. He, she's like obviously too busy um, to like pay too much attention to him. He doesn't know anybody because they're really estranged. It's on like a secluded island. Things turn sinister. I don't know. Then we have the the Bletchley Riddle. Is that how you say that? By Brutus, uh, Brutus Petty's and Steve Schenken. Uh, this is a middle grade historical fiction um, that follows two siblings at Bletchley Park, the home of World War II Codebreakers, as they try to unravel a mystery surrounding their mother's death. So um, I don't know that Ruta has written middle grade before. Maybe she has, but I'm really intrigued to read it. Then we have What Does It Feel Like by Sophie Kinsella. So this is a fascinating book and led me on a deep dive into Sophie Kinsella because you guys know Sophie Kinsella has been writing chiclet, kind of rom com women's fiction, romance, whatever you call it, um, for a very, very long time. This is a novella that says it is her most autobiographical to date. And it is about a woman who is diagnosed with a brain, with like malignant brain cancer. And she wakes up after surgery and doesn't remember anything, including like how to walk, how to write, all the kind of things. And I didn't realize that happened uh, to Jody or to Sophie Kinsella at the end of 2022. She was diagnosed. And so I don't know much about her personal journey with it. But she, like I said, she said this is the most auto autobiographical to date and that the main character story is her story. Um, I think this is like a 150 page novella. So I'm really intrigued. Then we have The Plan, Manage Your Time Like a Lazy Genius by Kendra Adachi. So uh, she wrote The Lazy Genius Way, The Lazy Genius Kitchen. I just think she is brilliant, and she is all about working smarter, not harder. And so I'm excited to read this book on time management and see what her thoughts are. Then we have The Trip by Phoebe Morgan. So it says four friends vacation in Thailand. One committed a crime. All four know how to keep a secret, and they're all guilty of something. Bum, bum, bum. Then we have, uh, I want to trust you, but I don't. Moving forward when you're skeptical of others, afraid of what God will allow, and doubt your own discernment by Lisa Turkhurst. So that is quite the title, but Lisa Turkhurst writes um, biblical or like Christian-based, uh, Christian living kind of self-help books, and they're always really great. She's got a really conversational writing style, and yet it's very informative um, and really good faith um, content, and I really like her books. Then we have My Missing Daughter by Ellery A. Kane. So this is, it says, a jaw-dropping, unputdownable psychological thriller packed with twists that'll leave you breathless. Perfect for fans of Sherry LaPena, Lisa Jewell. And um, it's about a woman whose teenage daughter goes on a camping trip and doesn't come home. But when the bus does come home, there's evidence of like a struggle. Her daughter's hair is on the bus. I don't know. Sounds, sounds stressful, but good. Then we have The Promise of Tomorrow by Samantha Tung. Um, this is about a woman. She's sure she's going to die soon, even though she's not sick. She doesn't have any injuries. Um, but years ago, her mom was in a hospital, and she made some sort of deal with some sort of um, stranger to kind of sacrifice her own life for her mom's. And um, I think that deal has her dying at 30. And now she's 29 and about to turn 30. And I think it's her kind of going through her bucket list. So... Uh, I don't know. I There's a lot of unknown about this book, but it sounds interesting. Then we have The Soulmate Project by Reese Ryan. So Reese Ryan's an author uh, that writes romance, and I have enjoyed her books before. And this says, um, in this delightful small town romance, can the search for a soulmate make two best friends realize the perfect person was right there all along? I love a best friend romance, so sign me up. Then we have Love is for the Birds by Diane Owens Prettyman. Um, this is for fans of Mary Alice Monroe. And it's, uh, let's see, let's, about second chances as two people find a pathway out of their grief directly in the math, aftermath of a hurricane. hurricane. So her mom's like candy store uh, gets destroyed by this hurricane. And um, he, like, I think it's a barbecue owner or something that's coming in to like feed people maybe and the romance between them. I don't know. Then we have The December Market by Ray and Thane. Um, this, again, is really a cover, cover, not buy, because I'm not buying it, but a cover grab. Uh, this is about a Grinch that owns a local soap shop, and so she can't, like, sit out Christmas because there's a lot of, like, very easy festive stuff for her to sell. And a single dad who's a paramedic and a fire chief, and it's their romance. I think her grandma has a romance. I think it's going to be cute and fun and festive. 
Then we have Make Me a Mixtape by Jennifer Whiteford. So this is about a guarded punk rocker turned barista who meets a big hearted sound tech who charms his way into her life and helps her musical past in this truly charming, cozy fall romance. So she's a former like 80s rock star and he, um, I don't know, he recognizes her or something and she has to decide, like I think there's a big turning point, she has to decide is she going to go back to music or not and it's the romance, sounds sweet. Then we have Not Yours to Keep by Zelly Ruskin. This is a debut that's blurbed by Rhea Fry, who is an author that I think does not get nearly enough love. I really enjoy her. Um, this is about an adoption speci specialist who's having her own fertility issues, so she really wants to adopt this baby um, of one of her clients, okay? so But her husband isn't sure about parenthood, and he's getting some like weird, sinister texts. And then we also get a woman who is struggling with the fact that she let a baby go 20 years ago. And the client, so the client's baby gets abducted and this other woman is the main suspect. I love books around like unconventional motherhood and infertility and all that kind of stuff. This is a thriller. So it might be better to wait until after I have this baby, but we'll see. Then we have The Trade-Off by Samantha Green Woodruff. This is a historical fiction about a woman in the 1920s trying to like make her place on Wall Street. And that's something I've never read before, so it sounds interesting to me. Then we have Love You a Lot, Key, Lock, Lotka by Amanda um, Elliott. So this is about a woman who's kind of a grouch, and yet she is the only Jewish person on the town council, like town committee. And so she is charged with... Um, like planning the Hanukkah festival or whatever. And the only person that can help her is another Jewish person who is like a customer at her cafe that really annoys her. And so they have to work together. It's going to be their romance and it's going to be festive. Can't wait. Then we have Dear Eliza by Andrea J. Stein. So this is about a woman who gets a letter from her mom 10 years after her mom died. Now, the reason she got this letter now is because her dad has recently died. And so this letter uh, was instructed to be given to her after her dad died. And it kind of dropped some bombs about her life. And um, so I'm not sure. It says for fans of Emily Giffen, Catherine Center, and Jennifer Weiner, Again, I really love that, and her life, I think, is kind of crumbling around her, except for her, like, uh, high school crush and her brother's best friend, and so there's going to be a romance. There's going to be some women's fiction. Sounds like exactly something I would love. Then we have Still Sal by Kevin Hinkies. So Kevin Hinkies is a um, children's book slash middle grade author, and this is a standalone companion to his series, uh, The Year of B Billy Miller, and this follows his uh, Billy Miller's little sister, who is a girl named Sal, who is about to start first grade, and everything goes wrong. Her best friend's in the other class. She doesn't think she's going to like her teacher. Her name is spelled wrong, et cetera, et cetera, but it says it highlights um, resiliency and making the best of a situation, and I just think I have a daughter who's six, and I think that it could be really applicable and really good lessons for where we're at. So fingers crossed. Then we have Hate Follow by Kate Quinn Kong. And I like this title is not something that would have drawn me in, but this is, it says to her 1 million Instagram followers, influencer Whitney Goldren's life looks just about perfect, but her curated existence explodes when her teenage daughter Mia sues her for invasion of privacy. And uh, the monumental case throws their relationship into a tailspin and has mother and daughter grappling with what it truly means to be in the public eye. And that is fascinating to me. Like the whole um, child's, children's presence on social media as far as like exploitation by their parents and all that kind of stuff is a discussion that I am just fascinated by and so I'm really excited to read this. Then we have Mistletoe Season by Sheila Roberts, Kathleen Fuller, and Pep Pepper Basham. So this, I think, is going to be three Christian fiction romances. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to be Christian fiction or just clean fiction, but Christmas uh, clean fiction romance sounds great. Then we have Christmas Eve Love Story by Jenny Baird. This is about a woman named Annie, and I have a daughter named Annie, so that's always like a buzzword. She's stuck repeating Christmas Eve until she finds everything she's been missing in life. I don't know what that means, but it says, In this heartwarming time travel Christmas romance for fans of Miracle on 34th Street, Groundhog Day, and Josie Silver's A Winter in New York. I didn't love A Winter in New York, but I am really interested in the time travel element and the Christmasiness and the character named Annie. Then we have the Holiday Honeymoon Switch. I already talked about this, so never mind. Um, then we have Snowy Mountain Christmas by Sharon Sala. So this is about a woman who saves a guy from a car wreck, and now he can't find her. And so he takes to social media. She, He's got, like, her shoes, so it's kind of like a Cinderella retelling. And um, he goes to see her. They get snowed in. And... 
have a romance. Then we have Soothe, Restoring Your Nervous System from Stress, Anxiety, Burnout, and Trauma. And that just sounds like something I could use, especially as we are anticipating um, the birth of this child. Then we have Christmas in Chestnut Ridge by Nancy Nagel. So Nancy Nagel writes a lot of Christian books or Christmas books that are then Hallmark movies. And so that's very much what I'm expecting out of this. It says when Sheila's best friend convinces her to help decorate a tree in the annual Christmas tree stroll fundraiser, she embarks on an unexpected journey of self-discovery all wrapped up in a cozy embrace of a tight-knit community. So it's her romance with a fire captain. Okay. Then we have If You're Not the One by Farah Naz Rishi. This is about a girl who has life all kind of laid out for her. She's got the perfect on paper boyfriend. Everything seems great. But then her parents get divorced. She, um, Her boyfriend cheats. I think she starts getting feelings for like kind of a nerdy guy. And her life kind of implodes. And she has to assess what she actually wants, which I love to read about. Then we have Light Enough to Float by Lauren Seal. This is a de debut YA novel told in verse about a girl's struggle with an eating disorder and her recovery out of that. Um, books told in verse are always really interesting to me, and I can see this being really emotionally impactful. Then we have October 9th, The Little Province Bookshop by Jillian Harvey. Do I, do I need anything else? No, but this is about a single mom who goes into a magical bookshop, and it sounds so darn cute. Then October 10th, Christmas at the Board Game Cafe by Jennifer Page. Again, it's the cover. It's the title, A Board Game Cafe. We actually have one of those here in Kansas City, and it's super cute. So, yes. Then we have The Village Christmas Party by Sue Roberts. It says, The smell of mold wine fills the air as the villagers listen to carolers singing. Everyone in town is ready for the big day, but Lauren only has hours to get the community Christmas party back on track. How will it work? I love Hallmark movies, but I truthfully never have time to read them or watch them because, um, I mean, they're always an hour and a half or whatever, and I've always got kids and et cetera, et cetera. But I can read books, so that's what these are. And then we have uh, See, Seen Her Year by Balin Wing. So this is about two teens who are um, both feeling just not good enough for whatever reasons within their family, within whatever, they're not feeling good enough. So they team together to have their best senior year. Then we have Hot Not Bothered by Harper Ford. So I think this is going to be a funny book about a woman going through menopause. It says coming of middle age story about menopause, second or third chance of love in the unexpected ways in which we can find our tribe at any age. Sounds great. Then we have October 11th, The Foster Daughter by Laura Wolf. So it says, a woman with dark circles under her eyes stands on your doorstep clutching a little boy's hand. Your heart stops. You let her into your home once before and it nearly cost you everything. For fans of Lisa Jewell, Jillian, Gillian Flynn, and Lucinda Berry. So her foster daughter comes back. She's already like wreaked havoc once. Do we let her back in? We'll see. Then we've got October 13th, The Making of Us by Debbie Howells. So I have another Debbie Howells on my on my bookshelf that I have not read. But this is about a couple that meets on a plane and they keep running into each other in a French village. And it says for fans of Nicholas Sparks. So I'm expecting kind of a tearjerker or at least a heartbreaker. I don't know. October 14th, The Cottage by the Sea by Carrie Beavis. Um, this is about a woman's husband and her best friend. They were both killed in a car wreck together. But why were they together? We don't know. Um, the woman kind of becomes a recluse in the year after their death. And she's attempting to pull herself out. Um, but she things turn sinister, I guess, in her um, dating quest. So she goes to an online dating thing. And, um, yeah, it's not good. And it says for, for, for fans of Frieda McFadden, Claire McCowan, and Lisa Jewell. So, again, all these names that are we're seeing repeatedly blurbed because I love them. Then we have We Three Kings by Kristen Bailey. So this is about a woman who is asked by her boss to um, eliminate one of her co-workers. So there's three other co-workers, and she has to decide who gets fired. And all of them have... Um, all of them have invited her over for Christmas, and so she's really excited to, like, get to know them better, and it's about found, found family, and she's trying to help them all keep their jobs, and I don't know. It sounds super sweet. Then we have The Guilty Patient by Luana Lewis. This it says, I take a deep breath I, before I utter the words I'm terrified to say out loud. My therapist wait patiently for me to speak, but nothing can prepare her for what I tell her next. I think I killed my best friend. Yeah. Then on October 15th, we have A Christmas Duet by Debbie McComer. So Debbie always releases a Christmas book. There's some conspiracy theories going on about if she's actually writing them or if she's ghostwriting or if someone's ghostwriting them because they're not as consistent as her old ones used to be. But this is about a woman who goes to have a solo holiday in a cabin 
finds out it was infested with animals. The uh, guy, small town guy, helps her. It's a romance of them doing all the festive stuff. Um, again, probably going to be very Hallmark esque. Probably nothing exceptional, but really cute cover. And I still, I, I will always try Debbie. Then we have The Telegram by Debbie Ricks. This is another um, Debbie Ricks historical fiction. I have a ton of them on my shelf. I don't think I've read any, but this has multiple timelines of 1915, 1943, and 1960, and it's inspired by a true story of one family throughout World War I and World War II. So I think that's going to be an interesting connection. Then we have Wish I Were Here by Melissa Wisner. So I read Melissa Wisner's... Um, released last year I think um the second chance here something like that I don't know I really liked it and this is a uh, opposites attract when a button-up professor and a carefree doorman must restore a magically missing identity which is hers so her she just all of a sudden like her identity is gone she no longer exists to the government and so um it says fans of Sophie Cousins and Ashley Poston so I'm guessing like in her other book the second chance here um there's kind of like uh, magical realism element so I'm assuming there's going to be in this but I don't really know then we have uh, Who Loves You Best by Marilyn Simon Rosenstein uh, maybe this is about a doctor who is a grandma and she doesn't have a lot of time with her granddaughter and so she drops everything to spend time with her but then she because her daughter has to go out of town or something she gets there and her um, mother, like her daughter's mother-in-law, so the other grandma, as well as like the step-grandma are there. So the three grandmas are taking care of this little girl and having to figure out um, all of the relationship dynamics. And then I think the, the mom of the little girl drops a bomb and everybody has to uh, do some self-examination. Then we have A Winter Wish by Emily Stone. So I don't think I've liked an Emily Stone yet, but I'm always intrigued. So this is about a girl who inherits her dad's holiday travel company, and she has to run it with, like, the grouchy young executive that um, helped him run it. They go to Spain. They have a romance, etc. Then we have Ain't It Funny by Margaret Gurevich. Um, this is a middle grade about a girl who's determined not to let her growing anxiety and her OCD hold her back from stand-up comedy to bring her parents back together. So I love anxiety and OCD rep. It's something that is really interesting to me, um, especially in a middle grade format, because I think if we inform kids early, um, potentially we could save a lot of heartache. And so, yeah, there's that. Then we have Wildflower Emily, a story about young Emily Dix Dickinson by Lydia Corey. So this is a graphic novel that is just showing us the young, fun, kind of more carefree life of Emily Dickinson. And uh, sounds interesting. Then we have Giddy Barber Explodes in Eleven by Dina Harvinick. Um, this is about a YA about a young girl who is unhappy, but she really wants to be a mechanical engineer. She's just misreliable. Everybody, like her siblings, come to her for everything. I think her parents probably depend on her a lot. And she is just burnt out. She's exhausted. She's burnt out. She takes 11 days of trying to change her routine to try to, like, calm her anxiety and panic attacks and beat the burnout. Um, so, I don't know. Will she explode or will she figure it out? And as a 35-year-old, what can I learn from her? Then we have The Bitter End by Alexa Dawn, maybe. So, this is, it says, when a winter storm traps eight teens in a remote ski cabin, they find themselves stranded with a killer who may be one of their own. Yikes. Sounds very wintry. Like, the cover is very wintry. Then we have Halfway There by Christine Mari. This is a graphic memoir. Um, I don't know who she is, but about a girl who comes home from her year abroad in Japan, and she's just trying to reconcile. Um, she's half Japanese, half American, and trying to reconcile those two sides of her and figure out where she belongs. Then we have October 22nd, The Christmas Cookie Wars by Eliza Evans. So this sounds familiar to me. So tell me if this is a republishing. I'm not sure. But it says mom of twin boys who are sad. At, like the boys are sad at Christmas because they lost their dad. So she wants to like reinvigorate this Christmas cookie baking competition. And to do so, she has to get like... Uh, she has some sort of adversarial relationship with their school principal and it becomes a town-wide thing and she's competing against the principal i don't know then we have slouch by christina wyman this is a middle grade graphic novel about a, t a girl who is really tall and trying to navigate friendships and identity and self-image and all of that as she is exceptionally tall then we have the christmas countdown by holiday holly cassidy um, it says, this is a rom-com about a young, recently heartbroken woman who is tasked by her sister to complete an advent calendar, like advent calendar challenges um, in the lead up to Christmas to reignite her belief in herself, the holidays, and love again. 
Yay, yay. Then we have Love and Lattes by Beth Reekles. This is a YA um, that truthfully, if it weren't for the title and stuff, I don't know that I would be super interested, but it's a YA about a girl who meets a boy and kisses him one night, and then he's the CEO CEO's son of her at her new internship, and they have to work together, so I'm sure it's some sort of kind of enemies to romance, but they like had a night together first. I don't know. Then we have Run by Blake Crouch. So this is a re-release of his like debut of his debut novel that was self-published. And it's, I think, told with an interesting timeline of like five days ago, a bunch of serial killings started. Four days ago, it got more intense. Three days ago, government issued some sort of statement. Um, let's see. And then it says, yesterday the power went out and today your name is announced on the list. Yikes. Sounds scary. Uh, Blake Crouch does like sci-fi. So I don't know if this will be a straight thriller or if it'll be sci-fi. Like I said, because it's his debut from like maybe 2011 or something and it's a re-release. Um, I'm not sure. Was he still writing the same thing then? I'm not sure. Then we have Catch You Later by Jessica Strasser. So Jessica Strasser writes thrillers, um, domestic thrillers. And this is about best friends who work together. And one day, one of them like impulsively leaves with this guy and disappears. And so now it's eight years later. The other friend has always kind of been blamed for her disappearance. And the guy comes back looking for the girl. So the guy she ran away with comes back and is like, hey, where is she? And we don't know. So is she missing? Does she not want to be found? Does she want to be found? What happened the night she left? Left. So many questions. Then we have Love on the Rocks by Alyssa Jarrett. Um, this is about a woman who suffers from anxiety and panic attacks, and she gets stuck in a snowstorm. She's rescued by a guy, and she takes six weeks exploring the outdoors. She takes like a six-week sabbatical and explores the outdoors with him. I don't know. Maybe that's the key to life. Then we have Book of the Month by Jennifer Propes. So uh, this is interesting. I, I don't know if I've, I think I've read a couple of hers. Maybe I haven't. I don't know. Is she steamy? Do you guys know? This is about a woman who's desperate for another bestseller and she'll go to any lengths to get it. Um, even if it means sacrificing her pride to chase the hottest bachelor in town and get him to break up with her. Um, so she wants like to, she's kind of in a slump and so she wants to live a romance and then have her heart broken so she can have that third act conflict in her book. And then they actually they fall for each other you know how it goes then we have christmas is all around by martha Rot watchers so this is about a former child star who is just desperate to like escape notoriety she is i think a some sort of photographer or illustrator and she pairs up with a guy to illustrate different scenes uh christmasy festive scenes around london so i'm guessing we're going to get a super festive book set in the uk then we have christmas at spruce hill farm by katherine springer Probably another one that's a cover grab, but this is about the assistant to a romance author, and the romance author, again, is kind of in a slump, and so our um, main character is the one who finished her last book, and she decides to have, like, a book tour at a Christmas tree farm, and then I think maybe they get snowed in. It's super festive, super cute. Then we get Weirdly Walter by Julia Walton. So this is a middle grade book about a boy named Walter, as you might guess, who is raised by a single dad. And then for some unknown reason to him, he has to go to a performing arts school and live with his grandpa. And he is like, you know, makes makes a name for himself and tries out for the musical. But then some of the other kids know why his dad took off. So can he face the music and deal with it? I don't know. Then we have Death Comes at Christmas, um, which is edited by Marie O'Regan but and Paul Keene. Um, but there is 18 festive stories of murder and mystery. And some of the authors are C.L. Taylor, J.T. Ellison, David Bell, Claire McGowan. So um, I'm not a huge fan of short stories, but there's a lot of really big names in this. So maybe... Then we have October 23rd, Christmas at the Little Bookshop um, by the, the Little Bookshop by the Sea by Eliza J. Scott. I don't need anything else. This is a super festive book. Um, I think the girl's like boyfriend, husband, co-worker, it doesn't really say what their relationship is, um, disappears right before Christmas, but it's going to be co cozy and cute. Then October 29th, Justin Till by Joseph Moldover. Um, this is about 17-year-old Hannah, and she has to make the decision um, to either put her nephews in, in foster care or follow her dreams. And so I think her sister is estranged. Her sister is not great news. And so she um, has to, for whatever reason, take care of her nephews or go follow her dreams. So which will she do? It's a YA. We'll see. Then we have Morning Fuel, Daily Inspirations to Stretch Your Mind Before Starting Your Day by Rebecca Faye Smith. 
golly, golly, that's a lot of names. Um, so I think this is a devotional, and I'm always looking for like short things just to get my mind right in the morning um, before like overstimulation and craziness begins. Then we have another kind of self helpy book, Beyond Self Care Potato Chips. Choosing Nourishing Self-Care in a Quick Fix Culture by Amber Wardell. I always think they, it's just interesting to hear another perspective. So there's that. Then we have Turning 12 by Katherine Ormsby and Molly Brooks. So this is the second in the Growing Pangs uh, series, gra middle grade graphic novels about a girl turning 12. And again, it's like her first crush, her first babysitting job, her first bra, all the things and how she navigates that. Then we have The Debutantes by Olivia Worley. So this is a YA thriller of, um, set at like a Mardi Gras masquerade. This girl is like dead the next day, but nobody's super surprised because she was kind of a loose cannon. But then something else starts to happen and there's three debutantes who are trying to figure it out. And we are not sure their connection, I don't think. I don't know. Sounds interesting. Then Unsinkable Cayenne by Jessica Vitalis. So this is a middle grade, I think, um, a 1980s middle grade told in verse about a girl whose family finally decides to settle in one place. They've always kind of been roamers. And she's finding it harder to like settle down and find her place than she thought it would be. And it says for fans of Lisa Phipps, um, Starfish, and Other Words for Home by Jasmine Warga. And uh, I know the sinking of the Titanic is like a big topic in this. And so I was obsessed with the sinking of the Titanic as a kid. And so maybe I'll find this relatable. Then we have Let It Glow by Marissa Meyer and Joanne Levy. So I don't know if Melissa Meyer has written a middle grade before, but that's what this is. This is a middle grade um, parent trap retelling about two girls who meet at like a holiday pageant tryout. And I love the parent trap trope. They're identical twins who didn't know each other existed. They switched spots. Sounds great. Then we have The Blue Hour by Paula Hawkins. So Paula Hawkins, I don't know my opinion on her. I feel like people have very divisive opinions on her. And this is a remote Scottish island where an uh, artist and her husband lived. And then her husband went missing like 20 years ago or something. And he was a cheater and all that kind of stuff. And now stuff is starting to resurface. And there's kind of a reclusive woman who lives on the island that is involved somehow. I don't know. Then we have I Shall Never Fall in Love by Hari Connor. So this is a YA graphic novel um, set by, like, inspired by Jane Austen set in Regency times. It sounds interesting. I always want to like Regency romance, and I just can't really get there. So maybe a YA graphic novel is my gateway. Then we have When You Were Mine by Emma Claire Wilson. So this is sounds intense. This is about a woman whose life is falling apart. She just had a baby. Her best friend um, comes into town, I think, to help. And there's a diagnosis. There's some secrets that need to come out. It says for fans of My Sister's Keeper by Jody Pico. So if you know, you know. Then we have Body Image Inside Out by Deborah, Deb Schachter and Whitney Otto. Um, again, body image is something that I feel like as me as a woman, especially navigating my fourth pregnancy and fourth postpartum period, um, is something interesting. As well as a mother of three, three maybe four girls. Um, it's just it's just such a mind game that I'm always game for more perspectives. Then October 30th, we have The Twins on the Train by Suzanne Goldring. So this is about a woman. Um, it's like Berlin, 1939 maybe. And this woman takes her two-week-old twins and just hands them off to this lady on this train heading to England and says, take care of them. And we get the perspective of both the mother who handed off her two-week-old twins and the lady who took them and is not sure what she's going to do with them. So um, sounds heartbreaking but fascinating then we have a very irish christmas by debbie johnson debbie johnson is another one i have on my shelves have yet to read um but this is about a new york woman who goes to ireland for a month because she like inherited a cabin or something i don't know she goes and expects like this quaint little cot cottage um but instead it's covered in, do in dust there's a straight dog there's two men kind of vying for her attention um one of which is an english aristocrat and the other is an irish handyman and um it says perfect for fans of sophie kinsella Catherine Wall and anyone who believes in the luck of the Irish. So that's me. Sign me up. Sounds great. So that is a huge list of books coming out in October. There were things that I intentionally left off the list that were either a part of a series or I particularly wasn't interested in. Um, but these are all 100 books that I would like to read if I had nothing but time and focus and energy to stay up all the time and read because that's what I would love to do. So that is everything. Um, let me know if there's any you're anticipating any of these from the list that you're really excited for. And that's it. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.